One reason uh, that I had for visiting Ciliot, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce that wrong, Ciliot, Ciliot. Anyway, one reason is to have a look at the Taliotic remains. And uh, so we've had a nice little walk along the beach, but now we're actually looking at a little bit of history, a bit of culture. And the promenade where we've been walking is just, what, 100 metres in that direction? And uh, if you walk up this little road here, you start to see a pile of stones. And you might not think too much of them to start with. Um, might not mean a lot. But these stones have been here uh, for, going on for 3,000 years. I mean, this is an ancient ancient site and that's right here in Suliot. So we've come down off the beaten track just a little bit back just to gain a little bit of an insight and uh, you can see the huge stones that have been erected here. There are all around I can see uh, these signs which are in one, two, three, four languages and it tells us that the settlement is one of the most important signs of the Taliotic and post-Taliotic culture from 850 to 123 BC both for the monumental variety and the complex and vast historical evolution. The Siliot settlement is one of the most important sites in the Taliotic and post-Taliotic culture which ran from around about 850 to 123 BC, uh, both for its monumental variety and its complex and vast historical uh, evolution, which starts off in the Bronze Age and re reaches the Middle Ages. The archaeological site consists of different monumental buildings around which the houses where the community lived were built. The main one is a, a true form monument. It's a, a community building from the late Bronze Age. That's from 1200 to 900 BC. And uh, was undoubtedly the predecessor of the classical circular and square taliots, which are the small watchtowers that you see around the island of the Iron Age. Around the true form, true form, true form monument, Different areas or rooms were later added where part of the inhabitants of the Ciliot probably lived. Among these structures is a kidney-shaped room which was excavated between the 1960s and 1970s and has become one of the reference models to get to know what the houses looked like in the Taliotic area. The other structures on the site include a circular outer enclosure which has been traditionally interpreted as a taliot, uh, a surrounding wall preserved in fragments, which joins different areas, and two horseshoe-shaped structures located east of the wall uh, that are tip, uh, typologically uh, uh, related to sanctuaries or places of wor worship. Furthermore, in the southern part of the settlement, there's a, a closest to the sea there's a network of structures that are set around a circular space which is yet to be excavated. This area is the least known of this settlement so that's the first sign that we've just come across and so it still does look like a jumble of stones but you start to see that there is a little bit of structure in here and uh, you start to see some of the places where people actually lived all these years ago and the effort that must have gone into actually building this when we were up in Arta we uh, we managed to visit a uh, Taliotic village there which was really quite impressive so here's a diagram giving you a little bit of an idea of what uh, what we're actually looking at at least part of what we're looking at. So the circular enclosure with the attached buildings, the western part of the site includes this circular structure to which the whole network of rooms was attached. This building shows formal features 
that are similar to the circular construction outside the settlement but unlike that it is integrated into the settlement's walled areas and at present the functionality and the chronology of both of the enclosure and the attached structures is, is totally unknown so we still haven't really found out what it's all about when we were up in uh, wasn't it? I think it was Monturi. Uh, they were still excavating the site there. So here's one of the sanctuaries. Look at these huge stones that have been uh, created. And you see in the centre there, there's another stone. And uh, what we seem to have learned is that those stone, the stone in the centre would be built up as a little tower. And from the outer wall, they would be. Um, posts that go into the, the central tower and that could then provide a roof space. And Anita's going in to rebuild it, I think. Perhaps not. Just round the edge of this one huge rocks makes you wonder put your trainers on. how did they manage to uh, to move such rocks the, uh, the local authorities have realized the importance of this and uh, so there is a, a dedicated pathway which is clearly lined up and uh, we've got this wooden walkway here which will give us a little bit of an elevated view so we can look down onto some of the buildings rooms that are are here so here we're looking at uh, two of the sanctuaries so we've got some images here of what they look like and this is the on the map of the area where we are now this is what we're looking at these are horseshoe shaped structures known as sanctuaries are unique buildings to which ritual or social redistribution functions are attributed chronologically they uh, they are set in the Mallorca's late iron age uh, that's post Taliotic probably 500 to 123 BC although they may be they may be earlier um, we're not quite sure. In this sense, the excavation of Sanctuary 1 in Siliot uh, could have much to say as it could be one of the oldest sanctuaries in Mallorca, if the first results are to be confirmed. So you can see the walls here that made up this area. The excavations of Sanctuary 2 didn't actually start until 2016 2016 and from that they actually recovered some ceramics and the ceramics do help us to to identify uh, ages so here's a, an aerial photograph to see what it it's all sort of looking like from above To the, I suppose, the east side now, because we're going. This, this is the closest bit to the sea. Anita didn't put her trainers on, so she's having to tread carefully. And uh, you might be able to see these little look like rails in the uh, in the grass here, and they're actually just to demark where we should actually be walking, where we shouldn't be walking. And there's another entrance there to the poblat. That's the village, the Taliotic village that we're in now. And there's another observation point we're going to go up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
it is very humid around here so probably mosquitoes so <laughs> excavations here were carried out in the 1960s and 1970s and uh, the first archaeological action in the Soviet settlement were carried out by a German university uh, during the 60s and 70s and they focused on the Turiform building and the surrounding rooms and had a great scientific and social impact for the first time uh, in the archaeology of the Balearic Islands the prehistoric settlement was studied using scientific methods and multidisciplinary points of view you can see some of the features here going to walk around the outside there. It would have been so easy for the hoteliers to have just taken all these rocks away and built a hotel on this. I'm so happy that that never happened and uh, we've got this preserved for future generations to discover a little bit more of the history of this beautiful island. observation point I can go up. This is all deadly nightshade here. So obviously looking at all the plants and seeing yes deadly nightshade. So now in a different part of the Taliotic areas and uh, we're looking at what's referred to as cutting room number 19. And cutting room it's a kidney shaped structure and uh, attached to the Turiform building and since it was excavated in the 1960s and the 1970s it's been interpreted as the home space. Inside it features two fireplaces and some structural divisions that lay out the different work areas. The most recent uh, studies have shown that the space was built during the Taliotic period, that's the 850 to 500 BC area. It does look as though the deadly nightshade is actually taking over here. So the plants do take over, they do caused a lot of destruction but it's nature taking its pathway. And this is really quite an extensive site. There's some picnic benches a little bit further up and some green area. People can actually come and relax. Anita's found a Taliotic stone to relax upon by the looks of things. I'm just really so impressed by all of these rocks which these people all of this time without any machinery as such managed to use in order to... Uh, how did they get them here? How did they... how did they lift them? And uh, make these structures. more here to go up. So it's quite a steep one, it's going to take us to the highest elevation. Really 
big as it's <laughs> it's big. here and we're looking down on this it's the touriform building of the Taliotic settlement of Taliotic it's a monumental structure of the late Bronze Age that's 1200 to 900 BC which is considered the predecessor of the later Taliots uh, with the typical circular or square floor plan uh, there are few excavation to reform buildings so it remains difficult to specify their function beyond the fact that as central and monumental pieces they played a major role in the social life of the settlement and of the inhabitants come round to this part, around the tour reform building there are numerous structures with different floors that have been interpreted as home areas where parts of the settlement community lived. Most of these buildings seem to have been built during the Iron Age, that's 850 to 123 BC, but there is evidence that uh, they were reoccupied and modified at later stages, such as during the late antiquity and of the Middle Ages. As a child, I think if anyone asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, I would have said, um, I want to be an archaeologist. I'd been fascinated by historical things of sites that I'd visited in the UK. And uh, well, it never happened. I never became an archaeologist. I became a scientist. And uh, the two things actually have merged since then. I think archaeology. Uh, when I was a child was more of a historical uh, means of study and I think more recently uh, archaeology has become much more scientific and uh, well, maybe maybe in my second, third, fourth, I don't know which career maybe that's what I'll do, I'll do a little bit of archaeology I'll be at least be able to research and study what went on in the past and Mallorca provides that wonderful place to do that. I think this is the last of the elevated pl platforms that uh, we come to. is quite an extensive wall. Although only one section of the settlement wall of Sliat has survived, it's quite possible that it surrounded the entire settlement. The Sliat wall probably had many functions for defence and as a, a demonstration of strength as well as uh, an element of urban organisation. Surve surveys and datings from 2016 suggest that the construction was erected later than the 9th century BC and that it probably underwent a refurbishment um, uh, or maybe removal during the late antiquity, somewhere around 500 to the year 800. And here you can see some of the external circular wall here. 
So we're just looking at this part on that up here. Let's see the circular enclosure located outside the wall has formal dimensions and features that have traditionally been linked to a talliot. However, a survey conducted in 2016 showed that the structure faces are narrow, so it looks more like a circular house than a solid construction, such as the, uh, the talliots. To the wall. This is the wall that is on the outside. Oh, it's very steep. This uh, little path that I'm going down is very, very steep. Look at the rocks though. They're huge. Some of them are nearly as big as me. They weigh a lot more than me. They're quite impressive. And shaped to fit in. This one is a huge one. It's astounding, don't you think? Mm. How did they get them here? Exactly. How did they do that? One of the mysteries of the people who lived two and a half thousand years ago. Is it New York or Stonehenge? Yeah, but one of them. I mean, there's lots of these dotted around the island. So this is possibly uh, the entrance, so you can see it's actually being crafted so that we've got an entrance. There's no lintel at the top, um, so inside this is the way you'd actually be entering into the, uh, the, uh, the whole surrounding area. Well, I hope you've found our little uh, archaeological visit uh, here on the east coast of Mallorca uh, at Siliot. And um, there's lots more of these, and it's certainly a place that fascinates me, and uh, we'll go and discover some more of them when we can. Thanks very much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye for now. Bye.